Hello, I'm Ms. Munir here for Lucid Science, and this video is to help you understand the concept of why we use assumptions in equilibrium concentrations, or in other words, the 500 rule. So let me start out by looking at a typical equilibrium reaction, such as this one. This is hydrogen and iodine making hydrogen iodide. So if you were trying to calculate the concentration of HI, the product, if you began with initial concentrations of your reactants, something like 0.100 moles per liter, you would typically set up an ice table and calculate the amount of HI using the equilibrium constant. So let's just go through that very quickly. This is an ice table and you would set up the changes to be X. Because H2 and I2 are reactants, they are starting with the complete concentration and then they decrease. So there is a decrease of some unknown amount X. In the case of HI, it is increasing by uh, the same amount of X, but because there's two of them, it's 2X. So this is the equilibrium concentrations are as you see them. To make the math easy, you may have learned that we can make an assumption that the reactants minus this change X can be assumed to be 0.100. So let's understand why. You may have been taught a 500 rule to know when or when not to make an assumption, but unless you understand why you can use it, you're really not understanding equilibrium. Let's make it just a little bit easier and use some symbols. Here, A and B is making the product C. Our K equilibrium equation would be the product, concentration of C, divided by the reactants, the concentration of A times B. If K is much bigger than one, that means that the numerator, C, the product, is um, there in a much bigger amount. If K is much smaller than one, or just smaller than one in general, it means there is more reactant or reactants, okay? So this is what the number tells us, whether we're more product heavy or more reactant heavy when we do reach equilibrium. If we made the concentrations something of A and B, something like 0.1, you would end up with an ice table that would look like this, okay, for what we just did. So pretty similar to what I showed you in the beginning, except there's just one C. X represents the amount of product made. If the product for this equation was small, a number that I'm bringing here like one times 10 to the negative five, then what we are saying is, which one is it? Are we expecting more reactant or product? So I'm hoping that you're telling yourself that's more reactants. Since X is a product, then the amount of X made would also be very small, okay? So that means the number, looking at our equilibrium equation as you can see here, the number that we subtract from 0.1 would be very small. And we can make an assumption that it has no impact and it's just 0.100. So let me just go back to this ice table. This is what we had before. So if X is very small, then we assume it's 0.1. Let's give some numbers to that. If we end up figuring out that X is 0.00010, which I hope you agree with me is a small number, then 0.100 minus 0.00010 is basically 0.100 even in terms of significant digits. That would just be the same as, as if there was no change to the initial concentrations. In general, if your K value is low, you can make an assumption that subtracting the value of X would have no impact and you can avoid all the fun math that goes into quadratic equations. Here's another scenario. Is it only when you have a small K do you always make an assumption? What about if the concentrations of the reactants are low? So here's an equilibrium again, but this time, as you can see, our A and B are also pretty small, 0.00100, both of them, okay? So if your X ends up being something small, like I had calculated before, then this is what you end up with. You end up with 0.00100 minus the amount of X, and here you have a value that you kind of can't ignore, okay? 0.00099. Um, it's not the safest thing to do an assumption. So how do we know? The 500 rule. That's what it's there for. So with dilute reactants, as you just saw, the assumption may not work. The 500 rule states, if the original concentration divided by the K value is greater than 500, 
you can assume when you subtract x from the reactant. Here's that simple equation that we have for the equilibrium. To make sure you're really, really understanding this, let's do an actual equilibrium equation. So here's an actual example. Consider the decomposition of gaseous NOCl at 35 degrees Celsius with an equilibrium constant of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5, aka small. The following steps determine the equilibrium concentrations of NOCl, NO, and Cl2 when one mole of NOCl is placed in a 2 liter flask. So this is the equation, as you're seeing um, in front of you. That would be the equilibrium expression, and that would all be equal to the value that was shown in the equation. To calculate the initial concentration, in this case, we were given moles and volume, so you have to calculate it, and it's one mole divided by two liters for the initial NOCl. So we're gonna put this into an ice table, like this. Okay, we have only one reactant, which is NOCl. Because there's two of them, it decreases by 2x, and our two products, NO is 2x, because there were two of them, and Cl2 is just 1x. All of those things. So, to apply the 500 rule, we take the lowest initial concentration, which is 0 0.500, divided by the K equilibrium, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5, and you end up with 31,250, which is certainly bigger than 500. So this means that you can use the assumption. So plugging everything in, that's our K. Here's our kind of scary looking uh, math equation of uh, 2x, 4x squared times x divided by 0.5 minus 2x squared. But when you use the assumption, you can get rid of the 2x because it's still very small and you have much more beautiful math to work with to calculate your value of x. Uh, you find x to be 1 times 10 to the negative 2 if you work it all out and then from there you can figure out that the final concentration is 0 0.48 moles per liter. And there you go. The assumption is there because mathematically it makes the most sense. Don't waste your time. You don't have to do a quadratic equation when in the end of the day it will have no impact anyway. Enjoy working out your equilibrium problems and enjoy chemistry. Take care. Bye-bye.